Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at Pep Guardiola's tactics that he introduced with the intense style of play that Barcelona were famous for between 2008 and 2010. These tactics kind of did proceed and get developed further in 2011 and 12, so we're going to skip them out of this video just because the formation was very different and the style of play was a little bit different. But anyway, Pep Guardiola said everything starts with the ball and finishes with the ball. The game is 11 vs 11 with one ball. We try and keep the ball, we try and play with the ball, and we try and make everything happen with the ball. This is absolutely true with how Tic Attacker plays. It's used the same five principles to restrict the opponent's game since he developed it in 2007, mainly high pressing, quick passing, positional freedom, attacking fullbacks, and a high defensive line. This style of football eventually went on to conquer the world, with Spain playing a very similar style. But the first two seasons of his reign is what we're trying to emulate in this video. His fourth season was similar, but he reverted to a 3-4-3 formation that he was playing in under Cruyff. For the seasons we're looking at in this video, he played a 4-3-3 holding, and I'll put the standard formation with the 2009 players on the screen right now, so you can see who they had, and of course there's some very big names in that team. We're going to quickly go through some of the most obvious comparisons you can make between modern day Barcelona and this Barcelona that we're looking at right here. So in goal it's an easy one, Testegen is about as good as Valdez if not better, so he'll be an adequate replacement for him. Modern day Barcelona's fullbacks are a bit different to the classic one we're looking at here, with the most attacking fullback in modern times being on the left in Jordi Elba and the defensive one being on the right in Sergi Roberto. In the squad we're looking at here, Abidal was more defensive and Dani Alves was of course pretty much a right winger. The centre-back situation is fairly even too, with Piquet and Puyol being replaced by Piquet and Longley. Further forwards in midfield, Busquets is obviously going to be playing the Busquets role because that's what he's famous for doing. De Jong is a decent replacement for Xavi but not quite as good. And the same is the case with Coutinho and Iniesta. Lionel Messi is of course going to be playing the Messi role, but you're going to have to probably play Dembele through the middle to replace Etu and Griezmann on the left to try and replace Thierry Henry. This is the opposite way around to their natural positions, but I think Dembele is more similar to Etu with the pace and decent finishing while Griezmann's more similar to Omri with better long range shooting and really good at finding space. So that's the team and how we're going to lay it out. Now it's time to go through the meat of this video which is the tactics. So the fullbacks will get forward but you'll only want to have one of them getting forwards at a time. For this squad that we're using now that will be Jordi Alba on the left trying to overlap Dembele or Griezmann on the left wing. Busquets needs to drop between the centre backs because he is responsible for bringing the ball out at the back and always providing a triangle to whoever is on the ball at the moment. Coutinho and Messi will drift around and swap positions like Iniesta and Messi used to do, with Iniesta occasionally going out wide and Messi playing through the middle. Griezmann needs to cut inside and play as a left striker really, while Dembele needs to get in behind as much as possible through the middle. This is how Etu used to play, he used to push the opposition centre backs back with his threat of pace, which Dembele also has. And Thierry Henry was naturally a striker, much like Griezmann is, but playing out on the left and involved with cutting inside and mostly being the focal point of any knock-ons that Etu provided. So that's the basic tactics on how you can set up like Barcelona, but you might want to know why this style was so effective. The style really does minimise the transition time between attack and defence, and that's something you're going to have to focus on when you're playing in this style. As soon as you get the ball back from an inception or a stand tackle or any kind of rebound or header from a centre back, you need to try and progress it forwards into your attack as soon as possible. This style of play allows people like Messi, Griezmann and Dembele to have one-on-one -on -one situations which they're going to usually create a good chance from because of their talent. The style of play also provides a numerical superiority by overloading attacking positions. You'll often see this from your fullbacks doubling up on an opposition fullback if their winger doesn't track them back, so if you're struggling to move the ball on it's always worth checking out wide to see who's progressed up the pitch. This constant press and this constant winning the ball back and moving it fast makes the pitch really restricted in size for opposition. If they want to keep playing a passing game, they have to try and pass it around Barcelona's relentless press, or they can hit it long, where Longley and Piquet are going to win most headers. The aim of the game for Tic Attacker is to create as many triangles as possible, which helps make the ball move easier. So playing lots of one-twos between your midfielders and strikers, getting your fullbacks up the pitch, and even having PK or Longley, who are both really good passers of the ball, progress the ball straight into midfield or striker positions, is going to be key if you want to be successful playing tick attacker. 
When you're in possession of the ball, make sure the pitch is as wide as possible when you're in possession. This basically means get your fullbacks and wingers out wide, even if you'll have someone like Griezmann cutting in from the left hand side, you should then have Alba overlapping into his space so there'll still be a decent amount of width for you to play the ball into. Making the pitch as small as possible when out of position is also key, this restricts the amount you'll have to press and prevents your players from getting as tired as they normally would do. You can do this by having a high line, which means the opposition will either have to play it over the top of your defenders, who despite not being the quickest are still fairly fast, or will have to just try and pass it through you and the press won't have to last as long. Quick short passes are much harder for the opposition to react to, so again, I'll be pressing R1 when I'm doing some of my passes, especially if I'm doing a centre back to strike a pass, just to put a bit more power on the pass. If you're wondering which tactics and which settings I use for this, I've put them all in the video here, but I'll try and copy them into the description below so you can just copy them straight into your career mode save. The standard Barcelona tactics aren't too dissimilar for what they actually use, so you can always go ahead and copy them and tweak them as much as you like, just to have a little base guideline on what you should be using. But anyway, I hope you learned a little bit about why Tic Attacker is so effective and how to implement it in your FIFA career mode save. If you did enjoy the video, please like and subscribe if you want to see more tactics guide like this and drop a comment and let me know which team you think has a unique style that we can try and implement into a FIFA save. Anyway, that's all we have for this video. I've done a full team guide on Barcelona if you do decide to play as them so you can see which players you might want to replace and some suggested transfers if you are going to start the career mode. But anyway, thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video very shortly. Thank you.